There is something that you, when you attach to the structure as far as scripture is concerned, that it's called the evidence of infallibility. And a lot of atheists have problems with this infallibility. But you've got to understand, it's not a theory. It's a teaching of scriptures itself. It means it has no errors and is never wrong. Now, in the, in the 19th century, at the, uh, at the Institute of Paris, they, they wound up claiming to have found 82 errors in the Bible, and yet all of them have been answered. What most people have a problem with and claim as errors are not errors, but it's difficulties. In inconsistencies occur when people do not take the time to find out all of the facts. Understand these three things. Number one, a lack of understanding is not an error. Number two, an unresolved difficulty in explaining the scriptures is not an error. Number three, silence from scripture is not an error. Now, when you look at it, there are six major kinds of difficulties that characterize those who attack the harmony and the inerrancy of the Bible. These six difficulties consist of faith difficulties, language difficulties, scientific difficulties, factual difficulties, doctrinal difficulties, and ethical difficulties. I'm going to explain one of them. And that's the basis of scientific difficulties and only because of the fact that, that some, some people here may be atheists or, or agnostic. When we deal with scientific difficulties, and some will say that it's filled with primitive pre-scientific views of the universe. And that the Bible, but here's the point, the Bible never claimed to be a science book. And but when, it, when you compare, you'll find no error about what it says about science. That is not true with science versus the Bible. The Bible does not teach chemistry or biology. But it, but it never stands in conflict with verified science in every way. I said verified, not theory. In all places that the Bible deals with scientific errors, it is completely accurate, even at times when science did not agree with it. Let me give you some examples. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, it talks about the roundness of the earth, not flat. When you look at 2 Peter 3, verse 7, it talks about the law of conservation of mass and energy. Talk to Einstein about this, okay? When you deal with Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 7, it deals with the hydrotical cycle that exists in, on the earth. When you deal with the basis of Jeremiah 33, verse 22, it tells you about the vast number of stars that exist. And we didn't realize that until the Hubble telescope came about, that, 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 about the numbers of the stars. When you deal with the element of Psalm 102, verses 25 to 27, it talks about the law of increasing ethopy. When you deal with the basis as far as Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, it's the importance of the blood in the life process. That they, 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 at times, used leeches to get rid of bad blood. But it was the life process that is that talking about. Now, also, in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 6, it deals with the atmospheric circulation that exists. And that, that's another one. And then when you deal with the element of Job chapter uh, 26, verse 7, it talks about the uh, gravitational fields that exist on the earth. Science, about a fact, is not an error. Question. If it's not in the Bible, how can you say the Bible is an error? Do you know of a scientific fact existing today that the Bible says is, is wrong? And again, if you do, show me your evidence.